welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect not only with your child, but with yourself. Now let's get started. One of the questions parents often ask me, apart from when should I try reaching out again, is how long does estrangement typically last? And the shortest answer is nobody knows the answer to that. There has been a little bit of research into this, but the numbers are small and the subjects not necessarily representative. So I think it might be more informative to talk about some of the factors that influence the length of an estrangement, and I will get to that in just a minute. But first, I'll share with you that a 2015 study of graduate and undergraduate students in college conducted by Richard Conti found that the majority of estrangements lasted less than four years. So that's a piece of information. But again, this study looked at students not the general population. So in reality, we just don't have great information about how long estrangement lasts in general. And even if we knew the average length of time, that wouldn't tell you how long your estrangement will last. There's no magic that makes it end because of an average length of time. The fact is it could be a month, a year, or five or even 30 years, depending on a multitude of factors. And not all of those factors are within your control as the parent, but the good news is most parents have way more influence on the length of estrangement than they realize. This podcast exists in a nutshell to help parents use their influence wisely for the benefit of both their children and themselves. So today, let's look at four of the most important factors in how long estrangement is likely to last. And these are factors that I have gleaned from my own observations. So they're not scientific. They are my opinion. And the first factor is you, the parent. You have the ability to control how you respond to the fact of your child's rejection. How you respond to your child's present behavior affects your child's future behavior. And this has been true since your child was very small. It's tempting to see your child as acting in a vacuum based on things entirely beyond your knowledge, let alone your control. But someone who chooses estrangement is never acting in a vacuum. It's always within the context of the relationship that these decisions to become estranged are made. I would argue that in some cases, not all, the most important factor in how long an estrangement will last is the parent's response. It's what you do with the fact of your child's estrangement, how you respond, in short, that can either start to heal the relationship or damage it further. There's much more discussion about parental impacts on estrangement in my book, Reconnecting with Your Estranged Adult Child. So if you haven't read that yet, I recommend that you start there. The second factor affecting the length of the estrangement is your child, of course. His temperament, his history, and his present circumstances, including the people in his life. These all affect how he thinks and feels and what he does from day to day. Some of your child's circumstances will influence him to reconcile with you, while others may have the opposite effect. And you can't necessarily know from the outside which is which. So mentally let go and try not to waste your energy focusing on your child's circumstances. It's common wisdom to accept the things we cannot change and concentrate on what we can. The third factor affecting the length of your estrangement is pressure, both external and internal, on your child to reconcile. According to research, adult children who estrange themselves typically feel unsupported 
in their decision to cut ties with family. They also question their decision in light of the loss of those family connections. In a culture that values family bonds, your child will find herself on the outside looking in a lot of the time. It takes an ongoing effort for her to stay estranged. Often the cumulative weight of these pressures compels people to return to the parents they walked away from. That's why on-again, off-again estrangement is so common. The child feels pressure to reconcile, but unless the parent has proactively made changes to improve the relationship, eventually whatever was a problem from the child's point of view in the first place will push her away again. I did an episode about on-again, off-again estrangement. It was episode number 28, so if you haven't heard that and you're interested in on-again, off-again or cyclical estrangement, please have a listen to episode 28. The fourth and final factor I want to talk about today is time. If you've ever broken a bone or recovered from a broken heart, you know that time itself is an important factor in any kind of change, especially healing. Things take the time they take. That includes tax refunds, water boiling, and yes, the healing of damaged relationships. Make room for time in your plans for reconciliation. And while time is acting on the situation, make sure to spend it wisely by focusing on the first factor, which is you. Most parents I work with have their own emotional healing to do before they can respond in the most effective way to the implicit or explicit needs of an estranged adult child. As I suggested in episode one of this podcast, don't think of time as an enemy. Use it wisely and make it your friend. So again, those four factors that influence the length of your estrangement are you, your child, the external and internal pressures on your child, and lastly, the passage of time. I'm sure there are other factors that may come to light as we move forward in this landscape of estrangement. But for now, I hope it's clear that there's just one factor that requires your full attention. And that is the only one you can ever begin to control. The only thing any of us ever can or should try to control, especially when times are tough, is ourselves. The thoughts we entertain, the attitudes we adopt, and ultimately what we choose to do in the face of whatever shows up in our lives. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, The Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, the Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com. 